Hey man. Hey Martin. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Martin's ball kick actually gave me a sore back because my whole really? body was gyrating around. Martin, today, can you smell that? Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. A skunk. What? Skunk performance part. Oh, no, yes. don't show it yet. Oh, really? um, why do I look like a pirate? We've got them, some gators. Now, I, I don't know if they're called a gator or if they're called There's a lots of different names for these multifunctional things. seamless wear. But this here is a it's, a, it's a sock without the toe bit on it that you can wear in a multitude of different ways. And I thought I would show you because, well, you can wear them in all sorts of different ways. Anyway, it's like that. People wear them motorbike riding. People even wear them as a, um, like as a mask. Like if you're going somewhere, you can, I don't know how like medically efficacious it is. Oh yeah, it you doesn't look it dodgy like at all. All right, enough talk about that. What we have today is a whole bunch of engine things to do, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we have our Mugen, not Mugen power intake, which could be a Mugen power intake for all we know because we didn't read the comments yet, but we're gonna. Um, we've got our stud thing that's a bit broken. Um, but what's a bit more exciting than that is I've been part hunting, my friend. Oh, dude, I have been parts coming out second the wazoo hand right part now. hunting. So as much as possible, we're trying to buy secondhand stuff. Um, there's still a few things like I spoke about last episode that I want to do involving the way we're going to run this engine just to get rid of any old crap and start with some new stuff. So needed drive-by wire throttle. And I found one and it's on a skunk. What? I'm just excited because we're also showing you our wheels today. I hear them too. We're going to get to them in a minute. Anyway, yeah. Martin, back to your stinky skunk. It's a it's a secret. No one no one knows their, where they are yet. What? What? The skunk. Anyway, so I got my hands on this from a Honda owner who was guess what he was doing and why he's getting rid of his B series stuff. Uh, buying a Audi. No. What do you do with a Honda if you've already had a B series and you want more? Oh, I put a K series yeah, in. Yeah. So, it? so okay. well, the good the good thing is there's so many people putting K stuff in that all this mad aftermarket B stuff is just out there and there's heaps of it and it's cheap. Which and is in, that proper skunk? This is skunk 2, man. Skunk, no, skunk 2 Ultra intake technology. So apparently this, like you can open it up, it's got like adjustable frog mouths in there. That's like a bell mouth, but ribbits. Okay. Um, but what I'm most excited about is already someone has retrofitted a Bosch, um, oh, a Bosch e-throttle thing onto this intake, which is gonna replace all this junk that I'm taking off right now with so this we mad can throw thing. it in the bin. It's already got injectors in it. We've got some Raceworks injectors as well that's going to go in there. I'm not sure what size these are. These might be fine or maybe we'll upgrade them. But either way, this is just super simple. There's like an air temp thing there, a vacuum port, a throttle, and then like some, I don't know, brake stuff or coolant passages or whatever. Anyway, that is going to simplify things in a big way. So yes, yes, you can make this work, but maybe that takes two days to get working. This will take like an hour to get working. So there's a bit of a saving. Are there. we literally getting this in that I'm taking off now, the... throwing it in the bin? Yep. And then that just goes straight on Dude, and that's just an upgrade. That goes that's to just... donk. And apparently the only trick is that there's this water port here and you can take one of those out depending which uh, yeah, what um, configuration of your intake manifold is. But a lot of B-series stuff is the same. So there's the B-18 or the B-20 or the B-16. Um, well, apparently a lot of it's the same. So we just put some fuel lines up to that and some vacuum stuff and away we go. I have some other cool stuff as well that I went and got. This, I've got a intake manifold gasket that goes on there. It's like a phenolic non-temperature transfer-y thing. That's I've got cool, these, huh? which are exciting. You know why? Because they're out of a K24 yes. or a K20, one of them. Um, so they're going to be our plop in there and I've got a bracket to hold them which is also very exciting. I also have a baffle plate for our sump. So we cleaned out the sump the other day. That's Do we this have thing. to weld that in? Yeah, we've got to weld this in. So this goes like, like it, it, it does something and we work it out and then we weld it in and we zot it on there. Something like that. And you just, um, yeah, tack it on and that's like a little baffle plate like to stop that, the oil man. smashing goes like that. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's cool, eh? That's for extreme cornering, isn't it? Extreme cornering. Extreme so apparently it's a good idea to baffle them. Um, what else did I get? I got some other mad stuff. Oh, I got us a flywheel, dude. Oh, light and flywheel. Yeah, we are talking got... about machining one last time you saw us. And then 
I had a look on the Honda forums, man. I've been spending a little bit of time on the Honda forums, oh. and um, uh, there's a wealth of really valuable, absolute bullshit on there. <laughs> but there is actually, there's been some really good information on there as well, Martin. And I'm going to be telling you all about flywheels later when we install it and um, getting everyone excited because it's all about the quick shifts, mate. There we go. Sweet. Do we need any of this at all? Let's have a look at it next to our other one. Next to the shunk. Because there's a water port thing there that we have to match up, which hopefully matches up. Looks different, looks like a totally different shape, so let's cross our fingers. So we basically need to swap those two parts over, don't we? I think so. Like, I don't know, there's no instructions that? for these. That's the thing with your, your old second hand parts, there's literally nothing, no instructions to tell you what to do. You just Martin, gotta you've just done it. cross your fingers and hope that that works. But it should work. We've got a new, this thing for it. What's interesting is though, that's got a round port thing on it, but all the gaskets have uh, square ones and the car has a square one. So I hope it fits. Maybe that's made to be like a multi thing that fits like lots of variations Look, of this engine. The worst thing that could happen is that we end up drowning in coolant. It's not too bad. <laughs> like. Drowned in coolant. I mean, the engine doesn't really need that to work, does it? So that's a new gasket that goes on Somehow, like that. That works. That doesn't work great though, does it? Well. Does it? I guess it does. It's a hole. I don't know. Let's get a whole round thing. We'll do some investigation and find out. But yeah, otherwise that, that all looks like it sort of goes where it's meant to go. Now we are playing engine head things. I've got this little blanking plug that goes there and that's where the distributor used to go and um, we've also got a new VTEC solenoid just looks to be in better condition than that like an aftermarket billet one um, so we're going to pull off some of the stuff that holds that together we don't have to pull cams out or do anything too crazy but we do have to take off some of the gear that holds the end bits down so we're going to do that now and slap this in all right man have a look Honda engineers at work here here we go and so now now that that's up and out. Cool, so it's still being retained by these big things, so we don't have to worry about our cam moving around, but we do have to get this up so we can put the cap in. The thing about buying secondhand parts the way we're buying them is there's no instructions. There's none, because we don't have any of the original stuff, so we're just sort of guessing. Um, if you've done this before and you know what you're doing, good on you, we have no idea. There it goes. Here, look at this, and then we go... Kablamo. Oh, is that done. it? That's it, man, back on. That's all we had to do, all that just to put the blanking thing that. on. That's pretty crazy, eh? That's, that's cool. Good. That's good. So that's where the distributor used to go. Gornskis, don't need you anymore. Now we can do the other side too, because um, this has got like a factory plastic one, and being that we have to remove our VTEC solenoid, maybe we'll do it now we know what we're doing. Because we have a new, a new VTEC solenoid. Here. Oh, there. Well, new as in aftermarket billet, probably in better condition than our 20 three-year-old one, it's really cool, so we'll man. slap that on and put in this extra blanking plug. The kit does come with two, so we might as well just do it, right? Go on. I've only found one problem that I'm finding very triggering, Martin. You look scared. What? What's the problem? I, th I think... I... That... I don't like that. Why? Oh, no! I just noticed. Yeah. I just... Does that... Does that worry anyone else? Can we, can we grab the hammer and we can just fix it? Can't we, don't we no, have to undo even this? Even if I can't see it, no, no, we don't, that, that's not, that's, oh, right. that's attached to that. Even if I can't see that, I'm gonna know it's not straight, like when I'm in bed. Right. I'm gonna think about it. I reckon there's other people out there that feel similar to me, Martin. Yeah, probably. I don't know if they're thinking about it in their bed, but. That. <laughs> needs to be upside down. Nah, like, dude, no, dude, no, don't do it. Down. Don't, do, dude, no. Oh, did you think I meant the other way? You're gonna, you're gonna upset so many people. Are we, what if we do the other one the other way? Or oh, they're both gonna be upside down? Well, it's only upside down if your car's All not right. on its roof. Good. Oh, you're gonna put the right way up? No, I'm saying that's how you might think that it needs to be, but actually, like... That's what we're doing, isn't is it? Is anyone okay. feeling more comfortable like that? Yep, it's done, man. It's a done deal. All right, so this here can go back in. We're basically going to hand tighten these uh, and then uh, got a torque wrench and we'll just um, 
put them back in. They don't need much here. I might need some assistance, Martin. They all go Hold on, on a second, mate. Is it happy? I think the way I'm trying to do it's probably not... Yeah, we could take them off and label them, but that's that's worked pretty well. No, I mean, look, I didn't... They're still... They're in their position. We're going to do one there. side one side at a time either way, and then we are going to... Torque wrench. The Honda manual says like 20 foot-pounds or something, which is probably about right for a 12 mil headed nut, and then I think it was 7 for the 10 mils up the end. Is the Honda manual the name of a Honda forum, Martin? <laughs> Yeah, refer to the internet. It's There's so much info on these, man, but that's the problem. You start getting conflicting info. If there was just one source, you'd go, great, that's what I do. And it is also good to have a manual for your particular engine, obviously. That's that's yep. the 100% the, the right way to do it. Why do people like Civics? Like, I'm genuinely really interested to know, like, why they like them. I know why they like I, them. But I don't need to hear from you because I hear from you every day. Oh. I'm interested in hearing from someone else. They're really easy and fun to work on. There's parts everywhere. But there's heaps of cars that are cheap and easy and fun to work on. I like, don't know. Why do people like Civics Because VTEC, man. Is it because in America Civics are popular because they couldn't get, like, other turbocharged? Like, is Partly. the Civic what you get when you can't get, a, like, a proper car sort of a thing? I just think they, I mean... Sorry, you know what I mean? I don't think, I think they look reasonably good for what they are. I mean, I don't know about them in bright orange, but, like, the shape's pretty good. And, and they... The shape is cool. They do have lots of handling mods. There's lots of mods for them. Um, parts are cheap. And, um, yeah, we know of manufacturers that make parts for these things that purposely price them cheaper because they're Honda owners. I am genuinely interested to hear, though, from people that own Hondas about, like, why it is that you love them, like, why it is that you like them, because I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm on board, like, I'm on the train, I got the one-way ticket, but I just, yeah, I just want to know. All right. There she is, mate. More little VTEC guys, see? Oh. Same kind of look. Same oh, kind yeah. of look on their face. Show me, show me, show me his face. See? That is the excitement and disappointment of VTEC. Let's give in to the universe. What do you mean? I'll show you. Hand me this. See this? Eyes closed. However it goes in, it will never change. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, there. <laughs> I reckon anyone playing along at home, I reckon like put them the same. Why? Like, well, <laughs> Why would you do that? I don't know, because this is dumb. Is it? Like, because now it just makes me uncomfortable every just time. Just turn I look it then, it. dude. It's your last no, chance. No, we, the universe. No, the universe has decided. That's right. Not you and I, Martin, but the universe. Martin, we achieved something. Yeah. We achieved something already. Slowly but surely. No, man, it's good. This is all got to happen. Next, we can put our VTEC solenoid on on there. Our mad skunk. VTEC solenoid. I just like the fact that it's called Skunk. Yeah, uh, they've got weird names, don't they, with Honda stuff? Yeah, man. Mugen or whatever, and Spoon, spoon and Skunk. Skunk. You could spoon a skunk until he Mugens. <laughs> Potentially, <laughs> couldn't you? Yeah, so the um, factory bolts that were on here were slightly too long because the shape of the outside of this um, VTEC solenoid here is like 10 mil, but then the factory one you can see has these extra bits on it. It's kind of Fat. like, yeah, it's, it's way fatter. So they didn't work and they were bottoming out. So we've just replaced it uh, with these. This area, on. this area I think is good now. Distributor gone. These bolts can go. We don't need them anymore. We are going to put a new thermostat in it. Um, these hoses look to be in okay shape. Just check the sensors, knock sensor, I'm pretty sure they're all pressure sensor or something. And then it's all the action now is over here. I've got to work out what to do because I've got to put new pulleys on. Yeah. Also got a different balancer that has to go on because it's got the trigger wheel, or it's, it fits the trigger wheel. So that's the next bit of trickiness I'm going to do right now. And we got to find out as well, Marty, whether this here requires some kind of goo or yeah. whether that gasket just is the gasket. Yeah, no instructions with anything. So. We got to do our research. I'm going to whiz everything off the front of this motor. It's got brackets upon brackets upon braces. It's all going to come off so I can get to the upper cam pulleys and the lower crank pulley. Let's do it. Oh, yes, Martin. There See it the goes. Brackets. The bracket department was strong in 1998 or whenever this was made earlier. Yes! When does that ever happen? Can you smell fish? That never happens. We are so lucky. Is that it? Hoo-hoo! That's how you do your timing belt in your Civic. Which, 
Do that timing belt has spider webs on it. I've never seen anything like that before. And so we're replacing these two and this one. We'll probably do the timing belt. I mean, there's there's no reason not to do a timing belt now. I mean, it looks, it doesn't look that hammered, but the water pump, if it's been sitting there for ages, could be a bit corroded on the inside. You don't really want to take risks with that. Yeah. Um, so Should we, we pull that out and have a look, Martin? Yeah, let's pull it out. You can tell that this engine's been opened a couple of times or at least had some timing belts done just by the way that some of these factory bolts are sort of rounded off, like someone's had a go at them. Sometimes people do timing belts and clutches and things with the engine in the car, which just makes it way harder to get access. Like this is so easy compared to if you just had this tiny bit of space. So good way to tell a little bit of history of your car. There she goes. Yeah, bit ready to be replaced. A bit crunchy. Hot, genuine Honda belt, it's a good thing. Who knows if it's the, the original? No way of knowing. Well, no, actually that's been, that's been pulled out so we can pretty be sure it's not original. Oh, yeah, it's just been sitting for ages, man. Look, see some of this like, this schmutz. It's just been sitting for ages. That pump may not be that old. It feels okay, looks okay, but the seal is pretty unhappy. Good chance it's been leaking a bit of coolant down the front, so we will replace all of that. I'm looking for a um, some parts for my Honda. Um, I've got a Civic with a B16A, um, and unfortunately my my VIN don't match my motor. Is that all right? No, I can't do anything without a VIN number on these vehicles, right? So genuine parts. Trying to find genuine parts without a VIN when you're doing an engine swap. I get it. They want to associate those parts to that VIN for. Who knows why? And also, they don't want the mystery of getting it wrong and then having to deal with returns. I understand the reasons. I just, it just make like I want to buy a hundred genuine parts and I can't. I don't have the VIN for. I don't have the VIN for the for this. Well, I don't have the VIN we for the car. We have a VIN for that, but that is not from that. It's going to give us the wrong stuff. So I guess I guess we go aftermarket. Okay. Good news is we've ordered some aftermarket stuff. It'll be here in the morning, which is actually pretty cool. So we'll have to have another crack at some other stuff in the meantime. Hopefully eat some kebabs in the meantime. Uh, what we are gonna do though, is we also, through JDM Yard, got ourselves a new oil pump. So that's this whole front bit here. Um, you don't have to change oil pumps. It's more that if your car engine's out and it's on a stand and you're gonna keep it and you care about it, maybe it's a good time to do it. You can see that there's a lot of, like even if you just did the front main seal here, it would be totally worthwhile. But our new oil pump comes with all this, so we just undo these, yank it off and put the new one on. Um, and trying to keep all this in the right order. So we're gonna do that next and then throw in our timing kit when it gets here. There is no use not doing that at this stage. Nah. Because we go blip, 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 patonk. Yep. Patonk, blip, 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 patonk. We might actually like this car. I mean, we do like this car, Mark. I'm starting to think that I'm we gonna like it. We might end up liking but it. But it's also the investment, man. When you put this amount of time and effort and love into a car, it's also hard not to because every, love. every time- Did well, you say love? Dude, this is love. Put a new oil pump and full timing kit and pulleys and aftermarket, this, that's love. That is absolutely love on your Honda. It is, man. I know that you love it too. You're blinking, but I know you mean it. I know you love it. Anyway, I don't love it. Every time you hit VTEC, you're just gonna love it sick, man. And every time your Golf slash Audi slash whatever hits boost, you're gonna be like, oh, I wish it was VTEC. Right? <laughs> he comes off again. VTEC man. Ah, made 70 kilowatts. Taking it easy, because I think I've disconnected everything that's on this oil pump, but. There she goes. Nice. Factory oil pump. And so we're gonna be replacing that with genuine yeah. Honda parts made in Japan. Oh, oh cool. look how shiny it is, dude. Really hope there's gaskets in there. Does it look the same? Um. Uh-oh. Does it look the same? I'm getting a looks different vibe from you. I can't see because of upside. Oh, no, no, I think we're good. No, I think we're good. good. What the only thing I'm worried about is like, where's that? Where's that? As in, where's the gasket? Or well, there's the... a little O-ring, right? Well, yeah, there's supposed to be an O-ring. Well, and there's another gasket there, which is this one, which I'm sure we can reuse because it's just like a little coppery thing. Does that one? Can we just pop that one out? Yeah, probably. 
Not ideal. I mean, look, we should try and throw a new one in. Let's find a new one. There might be one somewhere here. Not if we have to wait six weeks for <laughs> overnight parts from Japan. <laughs> I'd rather just service Gladys's old Civic because all the stuff's here and it's easy and I can see the VIN rather than give these two dickheads off the internet a, a, an O-ring. We ended up getting the parts uh, that we needed from JDM Yard again. So we called them, we're like, we need the oil pump. We, are they doing thermostat as well, Marty? Yeah, man. Yep. Um, and timing kit from them as well. Timing kit, thermostat, oil pump O-ring that we don't have. Um, pretty much everything to put these, this front of the engine back together, which means we can then put the sump back together, which means we can then put the top of the engine together, which we can put our intake manifold on, and then that's all we need to do to get this engine attached back to our gearbox with a clutch and flywheel and back in the car, which is what we're really keen to get happening. Yep. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna weld in this little baffle. All I'm doing is just marking where I need to sort of trim back some of the paint and then just zot it on. It doesn't need big hectic welds. There's really not much load on this or strain on it. I'm just gonna go zot, 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 glue it on. And then that with a new gasket is ready to go back on once we have the rest of our gear, which hopefully is like the Savo tonight, I'm hoping. Yeah, or, or tomorrow morning, but but it's we're gonna have it within 24 hours. So while Marty's doing that, um, I'm going to do the fuel pump, which is under the back seat. And then at least we've got a couple of jobs that had to be done anyway. It is kind of difficult leaving leaving this like this because we yep. want to finish it. Yep. The other thing that's been a little bit of a mystery for us that we've been going back and forward about is this kind of square or rectangular hole here. Here. But then that is not, like this is square here, as you can see. But on our skunk, it's a circle, um, but we've spoken to two Honda people and what did they say, Martin? <laughs> they said, send it. Okay, that baffle is in. A little bit hard to weld something that's been oily. Um, we cleaned it with degreaser and cleaned it with brake cleaner and brushed it and cleaned it and dried it again, but still a little bit pissed off welding it. That said, it's stuck in there. Well it's not going anywhere. It's absolutely not going anywhere. You can weld it as crazy as you want with that, but just make sure there's nothing in there. Now we have to clean it out again. Any of the little dust from grinding it out has to be hosed off, so we'll do that. And then that can go back in the vehicle on the engine. You got an Oki strap or something? Definitely don't have an Oki strap. What do I have? Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't have an Oki strap. Can you send it underneath the back seat? Can you see my fingers down there? Yeah. yeah do. Are you in? Yep. Two. Refund. 50, three, 350. Kebab fund, thank you $3. very much. $3.60. How much fuel's in here, do you know? No, no idea. So, as usual with this car, I brought some tools to undo it. Also, as usual with the car, look at this. That one, finger tight. <laughs> I also noticed that the inside's all cracked and messed up. Look, someone smashed it. Yeah, because this car sucks, man. Well, it has yeah. potential, but it's just, like, this is, this is not a good example. You Dude, know, of, like people who are like, ah. Oh, Oh, one of them. Oh, no, it's not. It's not done. I looked up EK9 Civics on the internet. They're the good ones, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're the hectic ones. Yeah, okay, cool. I got a little bit excited. How much are they, though? Should we just sell all of this and buy one of them? Probably. <laughs> if you can even get one anymore. No, man, we're on the right track. This is going to be sick. And because we did it, it'll be good. All right, so this is coming out. You want to be careful when you're taking these out, pulling this towards the car. And then when you see the bag, <laughs> you want to hold on to the bag so it doesn't get lost down there somewhere, because these can fall off. There may be a more elegant way of doing that, but... Get him out. Yeah, there it dude. is. Awesome. And look, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly special there, but no, we are... Um, looks stock to me. We can um, keep the hanger, and we're gonna replace the actual pump, and also replace the bag. We'll do that now up on the bench, throw it back in, and another job done on this festy piece of shit. So that is our old fuel pump there. Now over here, we have a straight up factory replacement, which is here, which is why we are not using that, but we are gonna be using some of that stuff because we are using a, oh, look at that. Look <laughs> soon, at that. very soon. Um, 
uh, this one, which Raceworks sent us. So basically, performance fuel pump means, again, more potential for later on, whether the car became turbocharged, uh, ethanol ready. Obviously, ethanol runs, you know, needs way more flow. So this one here, I don't know if this is going to plug in or if I'm going to have to solder some stuff on there, but this here is going uh, with that bag like that in there and then back in the car. And if we're really lucky, that will plug in. But if it doesn't, yeah, but if it doesn't then like basically solder. it's just, just two wires. Go Smash it in blip, then. Blip, let's do it. Solder, solder and done. All right, let's do it. 23 years of petrol sloshing around in there, making it all hard and crap. So you know what we should do quickly is see if that is going to go... Awesome. Like so, that. the trick for new players It's only though, if the polarity is correct. Well, yeah. like we've we've so played this game before. On this one, it says that the positive is on the right. Does that tell us what it is? Uh, positive is, yeah, on the right. Oh, cool, man. She's a plug-in. That's, That's great. such a win. All right, so that little lock on the bag is in. There it is. Quick, awesome upgrade for, you know, it's funny when we're doing these kind of projects because normally I would say we're putting this fuel pump in because we're going to turbocharge it, we're going to run on ethanol. But with this kind of car, um, this kind of catch and release, we're trying to find cars that have been flogged and no one cares about. And we're trying to catch them, enjoy them ourselves, give them a kiss and then send them back out in the wild. So that's kind of like the right thing to do for someone, whether it's us or someone else, they're going to have the right pump for their turbocharging or for their ethanoling. It's just so, insurance too, isn't it? Because that pump's done 22 or 23 years of hard service and you know what? Yeah, you can just put a factory replacement one in if you want. That's an option. But yep. it just means you're back in there if you ever want to do another upgrade. But that's so quick and easy. Like less than so 10 easy. minutes. Back seat up. Even if you have to solder that on, it's still only going to be an extra two or three minutes and that's a mad, a mad little, um, mad little upgrade. Just slap so, it in. Let's go put it back in, mate. So when we're putting this back in, basically we want to hold the bag up against the back of it like that, and then we're going to feed it on an angle all the way back in. And it should just go nicely. So easy. Back into place. So easy. It's never that easy, man. And then there's just a little rubber seal under there. Get the hose out of the way. That hose out of the way. Boom. Look at that. Just like that. Done. Love it. Um, it's worth noting too, this car's probably got really stale fuel in it. So at some stage you may have to drain the tank or just at least flush it through. Yep. Because um, if this car hasn't moved for years, there's a good chance that whatever that stinky stuff in there, it smells a bit shellacky, doesn't it? Like it does. It, yeah. it does, yeah. So we'll probably have to drain that out. I'll get a flat blade and some spooge. Thank you, mate. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah, awesome. Boom. All right, mate. Done. That is done. Pumped and sumped. Oh, that does sound like a <laughs> an adult move. It's kind of like a pump and dump, except no one makes any money. All right, Martin. There it is. Well, not there it is, man. We've, we've basically got a jigsaw of bolts, an oily mess, stuff missing on here. Although those parts, the stuff for here are going to be here any minute. So the second they arrive, I think I'm going to slap them on because I can do cam wheels, cam belt, water pump, oil pump, and the oil pump's on, then the Happy VTEC man can go back on. And once Happy VTEC man is back on, Sump can go back on with its fresh new baffle. And then we can put intake manifolds on, we can put rocker covers on, we can, what else can we do? We can. <laughs> Here's my impersonation of a Honda. <laughs> Except you're doing it wrong because look, he's got, wait, one arm, another arm, and he's just got- That's the... his legs, man. No, but no, dude, that's not his legs. <laughs> and he's no, just going- not his legs, it's a- And what he's doing is he's going, <laughs> but he's not actually going very fast. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, as you were, Martin. Man, that's really quite clever I did not see that uh, so anyway so when our oil pump goes back on sump back on all that stuff back on bolt all slap all the stuff back onto the engine 
so the engine can engine again, and then we can put our flywheel on, we can put our clutch on, put the gearbox back on, and then, man, we're going to be dumping engines and gearboxes back into this Civic. We're going to have an average car that's not that fast. It might not be fast. We have been a little bit worried that for all this work, we're going to have a Civic that's slow. But it's it a might, possibility. It's, it's going to handle, though. It handles well. It's going <laughs> to handle well. That's right. a fact. This stuff's going on, and then you just come with us. We're going to slap it, slap it, quick, slap it. On the we're just, yeah, we're, slap, slap, slap. We're just waiting, but it'll be here soon. We're not going to make you wait, though, don't worry, because we right now, I can guarantee you the conversations get inane. You, 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 you don't want to be involved. When that button hits stop, you, you don't want to be around. I tell you what, we're, we're talking aliens, we're talking scandals, we're talking history conspiracies. Actually, we've got a whole show about that, the unicorn circuit. <laughs> Check it out. All right, we're going to slap that on. It fits. Bloop. Bloop. Oh, yeah, that's a decent schmoo. Let's get a nice little pop of schmoo out there. VTech man. It was the Frank before the Frank. When you cut open a salmon, Martin, there's two things you'll find inside. Whoa. Either caviar or semen. And apparently the semen has a lot of protein in it. Oh, that's clever. I like that. I heard that they migrate for months. The doctor wasn't really sure exactly what he should do with it, but next time he went to the doctor, it had just fallen off. Like it wasn't even there um, anymore. That's crazy. It'll be cut real. So you really think that's the end of petrol engines? Are you going to be in an electric it's car done. soon? Yeah, I've been in an electric car for years, man. Really? I've had electric cars non-stop. That's a win. Oh, you had the Fev, didn't you? Yep. It was just, but the thing is, it just sort of gushed out. Like I, it gushed everywhere. Like it was all over me, it was everywhere. But and that's then, why people put plastic down first. Well, plastic down first. Did you put plastic first. down and first? Then I, Did yours make a noise when you pulled it out? It kind yep. of makes this kind Yep. Every noise? time, dude. It sounds like an ibis vomiting. You know that sound? Like <laughs> I've heard that. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I kicked one in the dick once. Timing belt on, sump about to go on. We're about to be bolted on. It's been placed on, and it's looking like an engine again, sort of. Now, Martin's rules are that you never, ever, ever put bolts or nuts or anything of significance. Where, Martin? Well, inside stupid places are not supposed to be like inside a random drawer on a toolbox or a random box or something. You yeah. should never do that. But you remember where they are now, don't I you? Do, yeah. You do. I so do that's, um, come and get them, Martin. Every time I see an ibis's beak, I think about how awful it would be to have that beak in you.